Tensions do increase on the Black Sea. Russia intercepts an American drone on the Black Sea and also Ukraine attack Russia and Russia attacks Ukraine. Of course, meanwhile, on the same weekend, we had Ukraine trying to have a talk for peace in Saudi Arabia and they didn't really get any concrete steps. The Global South seems to be not willing to support Ukraine. And Wall Street says that the recession that there never was, remember, we are not in a recession. However, Wall Street is saying that the recession is, will be over by the next quarter. And XRP, the price performance of XRP did not go as expected, regardless of the court ruling. This and a few more things are the things we're going to be discussing in today's video. And the main headline for Bloomberg today is how Wall Street forecasts a project profit recession that would end next quarter. And we have it here. The bad news, S&P 500 index companies are on track to notch on a third straight quarter of profit declines, with per share earnings down 7% after more than 80% of Gage members have reported. So remember, we're supposed to have two quarters of recession in order to be on a recession. However, we are not on a recession according to the market. However, they're saying that the chances of recession or the recession will be over by the next quarter. The Federal Reserve is no longer forecasting that its aggressive tightening will tip the economy into recession. So the Federal Reserve says the recession is not going to be triggered by the tightening. However, they're the same people who say that inflation was temporarily or now we know inflation is a bit more persistent than what it predicted and we can see here as long as inflation continues to ease and the federal doesn't surprise with a tighter policy everything should be well in my opinion the tensions on the war the tension on the black sea will push the price of energy and the price of food upwards and that will cause inflation to go higher than expected and I think the Federal Reserve will have to increase the interest rates. And so far, the market or Bloomberg is not really on me on, with me on that. You can see here, US inflation data may offer some comfort for the Federal Reserve. I'm not fully on board with it. You can see here, while that's similar to June, the figure is likely to retreat in coming months because core inflation accelerated in August and September last year. We'll see. A core CPI that underscores further disinflation will be consistent with the market expectations that the Federal Reserve will hold off raising interest rates in September after a quarter percentage point hike last month. Remember the last meeting, the Federal Reserve increased interest rates by a quarter. They think on the next meeting there will be no increase. Let's see. I'm not the only one who's agreeing with this. Speaking this weekend, the federal governor Michelle Bowman said that U.S. central bank may need to raise rates further in order to fully restore price stability. And I do agree with her. I do not think we are of the woods. I do not think the economy is out of the woods. And since we're talking about Ukraine, Ukraine peace plan talks end in Saudi Arabia with very few concrete steps. And I think this headline is a bit optimistic is not just few concrete steps, there's no concrete steps. That's my reading because Vladimir Zelensky has a 10 point peace formula. And according to the Global South, some members have said that this 10 point of Zelensky does not include Russia. If you wanna have peace, you want to include two parties or all parties involved. The thing is, Zelensky was at this meeting, Vladimir Putin was not invited and the Global South saw that this was a wrong move. However, someone in the meeting promised to update or to keep Vladimir Putin informed of the whole thing. The thing is the 10 point that Zelensky has does not include anything for Russia, it would be a total defeat for Russia. And if you want peace, I'm not sure that's the way to go for it. Those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Please let me know on the comments below. I'm not saying I agree or I disagree. All I'm saying is that the Global South does not want fully back up Ukraine and say, or oh, there's no concern for Russia. 
they want the concerns of Russia to also be brought on the table if they want to have a peace talk. The Global South said, if Russia's concern is not on the table, this is not a peace talk. It is a talk about how to defeat Russia. Now, this is what the Global South said. Let me know your thoughts on the comments below. Over the weekend, there has been several attacks. You can see here, Ukraine attack Russian oil tanker. Also, Russia attack or counterattack Ukraine. You can see here on this image, a blood transfusion center after Russian strike in Kharkiv region. So, Russia sent missiles as a counterattack to Ukraine, attack areas on the peninsula of Crimea. And you can see here, a peace plan pitch by Ukraine and its allies to more than 40 countries this weekend in Saudi Arabia brought little in the way of the firm steps to stop the war or reverse Russia territorial grain. Separately, Ukraine struck the Chongara automobile bridge on the border with Crimea and Sergei Atsinov, the governor of the next region, said that Russian air defenses destroy a drone on Sunday morning as it approached Moscow. So there has been attacks from both sides over the weekend as they have a peace talk. I think this was not a good idea. This will increase tensions and the 10-point peace of Zelensky, again, according to the Global South, does not include Russia. We have a separate headline here, not from Bloomberg. Russia fighter jet intercepts a US reconnaissance drone over the Black Sea. The thing is, of course, drones of reconnaissance, drones with cameras, there's going to be a lot of surveillance on that area. It is an area of tension and the US and NATO will continue to use drones to surveil that area. It is very common. It's not an act of war and it's not invasion of airspace. It's just surveillance. If there are conflicts, there's going to be an increase in surveillance. And this time, a Russian airplane had to intercept this drone. Now, it is not necessarily attack. It was not an attack drone. It was just a reconnaissance drone. But it is a sign of escalation on that area. And that area is not the only area with escalation. You can see here, Iran Revolutionary Guard shows missiles in new hardware display. The equipment includes cruise and ballistic missiles powered with electronic warfare systems and artificial intelligence with a range up to 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles. We showcase part of our increased power in order for the enemy to be accurate in its calculations. So, tensions will continue to increase between Israel and Iran. There's going to be a lot of tension increasing on that region. Another place where tensions are increasing is West Africa. West African countries agree to Niger intervention plan. Now, Niger is a country that doesn't have access to the sea. In my view, this whole confusion can be solved with just sanctioning or blocking access to the sea. Because if once Niger has no access to the sea, it is dependent on its neighbors to have access for food import and export. Now, this to me would be a way in which African countries that are not in favor of this can put pressure on Niger. Now, I'm not sure this is what they're going to do, but it is a peaceful way to put pressure, at least in my view. You can see here, the agreement was announced on Friday after a three-day meeting of defense officials of the Economic Community of the West African States Regional Bloc in Nigeria's capital, Abdullah. It came as the president of Nigeria, the region's most influential country and largest military, sought legislative permission for military action. So pretty much Nigeria is looking for an approval from the other countries to push or to act militarily with Niger. And unlike the other invasions, unlike the other coup d'etat in Africa, one thing important to know that this president in Niger is the first democratic elected president and he is favoring the West. And part of the population in Niger is favoring Russia is still this divide between Russia and the US. Before, the conflicts would be about jihadist movement. In my view, this time, most of the coup d'etat or most of the civil war on conflicts in Africa will not really be about jihad or not jihad, 
but will be between who are on the side of Russia and which ones are on the side of the West. And it seems like Africa is growing, at least, in favoritism towards Russia. In this conflict, we see a lot of flags, or a lot of people holding the Russian flag. You can see here, over the past three years, ECOWAS has tried and failed to convince military leaders to restore democracy in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. But it did not threaten the use of force in this country. So that's why the president of Nigeria is not threatening to use military force. To me, this has a great potential to become a civil war. And you can see here, as I mentioned, they have a flag of Russia. So to me, we're going back to the two power dynamic, capitalism represented by the US and socialism represented by Russia or the Soviet Union. It seems like Africa is going back into that dynamic. This time it is about who supports the West and who supports Russia. And I think the conflict in Ukraine will be increasing the tensions in Africa as well. At least those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to find out more about this conflict in Africa, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell because I'll be making a video specifically about that. And since you already talked about traditional market and geopolitics, let's talk about cryptocurrency. And the thing is, the XRP price disappoints after court ruling. Now, a lot of people are expecting an all-time high or at least a $1 XRP after the favorable ruling, and that did not happen. You can see here, despite a brief rally, the XRP price did not reach anticipated levels after a recent favorable court ruling for the token. Among those with ambitions, price targets for the cryptocurrency is pro-XRP lawyer John Ditton. And John Ditton seems to be disappointed. However, he made a tweet. It is all about expectations. Unless we are in a full bull market led by Bitcoin, I never believe XRP would hit an all-time high even after a good ruling. So I agree with him. If we are in a bull market, most likely Bitcoin would be the cryptocurrency that will be taking that lead. And let me confess something to you guys. I only over the weekend, just before the weekend, realized that Twitter changed its name to X. While he did not anticipate XRP reaching a new all-time high after the ruling, he did expect the price to surpass the $1 resistance level. So he did get disappointed after all. We need to remember that XRP has reached its all-time high at $3.84 over six years ago. Now, in my view, in order for XRP to really surpass $1 and come to a new all-time high, that move will be led by a bull market and will be led by Bitcoin, as mentioned above. At least, those are my thoughts. Now, what are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below. And with that, I wrap up this video. So if you did get value from this video, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell, also share with someone else that you believe may get value from this video. This is it for now. See you guys on the next video.